Hey, Revival Temple, just wanted to come to you with a devotion just to encourage you uh, throughout the times that we're dealing with right now. Uh, it's Pastor Daryl, and I uh, just want to say that we miss all of you guys. We can't wait till we can all get together again. Uh, I know that this is trying for a lot of you, but uh, we're believing that God is faithful and that uh, he's never going to leave us, never going to forsake us. He's certainly not going to fail us. I wanted just to uh, spend a couple minutes with a short word uh, to give you some hope. That's the theme of this devotion is going to be hope. Hebrews chapter 6 uh, and verse 19. I actually have this scripture that is hanging on our wall in our house. It's just a good reminder of what we have, not just around us, but inside of us. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19. It says, This hope that we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us. That hope that this scripture is talking about, it's not just an object, it's a person. That hope is Jesus. Jesus entered the veil. He tore the veil. He gave us access into the presence of God. The word says in Psalms, it says that in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures evermore. In God's presence is where you're going to find peace. Jesus is the one that gave us access to God's presence. It is him that we have this hope in. He is our hope. Hope literally has a name and that name is Jesus. This scripture says that hope is an anchor to our soul. I personally have grown up fishing. I've grown up on boats. I've grown up on the rivers, being out on the oceans, being out on different places. And there's a couple things that anchors are used for. Number one, there's been times to where when the wind has been pushing or the tide has been pulling, we've literally thrown the anchor to literally set us in a spot that we did not want to move from. I remember one time that we were all in a boat as a, our entire family and a storm, a very bad storm come and the wind started blowing. It was blowing the boat all over the place. And I will never forget this is that we literally drove our boat into a place. We threw the anchors out that we had and we rode the storm out because here's what an anchor does. An anchor literally is something to keep you from drifting because of the circumstances around you. So this scripture saying that we have a hope as an anchor for our soul. What is our soul? We know that our soul is our mind, it's our will, and it's our emotion. It's our intellect, our will, and our emotion. Those three things, those three things control pretty much everything, the perspective around us. They control how we see things, how we respond to things. So whether your mind is being bombarded right now, whether your emotions are a storm, your emotions are pulling you this way, they're pulling you that way because of information that you've got coming in. I mean, let's face it, we're in information overload right now. And a lot of it is fearful information. A lot of it is uncertain information. We don't really know what's going on or how things are going to work out. I want to encourage you to do something today. You may not be able to control the circumstances around you, but you can certainly control the circumstances within you. And I want to encourage you to do something. When it seems like a storm is going all around you and this is trying to pull you that way or this is trying to push you that way, anchor out into a place that the Bible says is both sure and steadfast. In other words, it is immovable. That place is the presence of God and the anchor that holds us in the presence of God is the person of Jesus Christ. So let's just think of it like this. When your mind begins to drift as if it's in a storm, when your emotions begin to drift, when your emotions get pulled and pushed in all these different ways, literally find yourself a time, a place where you can go into the presence of God and I'm telling you, Jesus can speak peace to your storm. There's another story in the Gospels where Jesus is in the boat with his disciples. Prior to that, Jesus tells them, he said, let us go to the other side. He says us, plural. In other words, I'm going with you to the other side. And during the middle, during the middle of the place that they're in, from the time that they started and before the time that they ended, they encountered a storm so bad that they literally thought they were gonna die. They even questioned Jesus. They said, do you not care that we perish? They woke him up. He was taking a nap in the middle of the storm and they woke him up. And what do they say? Jesus, do you not even care that we're gonna die? Here's the thing. Had they realized who they had in the boat with them, because they said this, Jesus, he wakes up. He says, oh, you little faith. He goes on to rebuke the storm. He speaks peace to the wind and to the waves and everything levels out. And they asked this question, what manner of man is this 
They didn't realize that their hope was literally in the boat with them. So if Jesus gives you a word that we're going to the other side, this thing is going to be completed, this thing is going to be over, we're going over there. If he gives you a word that you're going to one place, it doesn't matter what happens in the middle. He is with you. He's going to see you through it. So don't let your, your perception, don't let it be influenced by everything that's going around you. Let it be influenced by the one that is on the inside of you. The Bible tells us this. It says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Listen, there's a lot of things that are in the world right now uh, that, are, that are vying for your devotion. They're vying for your attention. I want to encourage you to do something right now at Revival Temple. Take a moment, if it's for 30 seconds, if it's for a minute, if it's for five minutes, and find yourself in the presence of God. Ask Jesus to be that anchor for your soul. I'm trusting that when you do that, the peace of the Holy Spirit that the Bible says surpasses our own understanding is going to rest upon you, calm your mind, so that you can have peace during the middle of this storm. God bless you. We can't wait to worship with you again. Until then, we're going to be bringing you these short devotionals. We're going to be doing church online. So make sure that you're tuning in. And uh, until we can hug you again and embrace you, we love you. We're here for you. If you need anything, be sure to reach out and contact us. God bless.